this video we are going to start the new unit that is called the current electricity so first we'll go to the introductions we'll learn how do you understand by the current electricity what is the meaning of this so previous unit we learned about the static electrostatics or static electricity and we learned different type of applications and different type of uh, things like electric field electric potential electric potential energy and so many other things so now we learn that the charge in this chapter we learn the charge is in motion so for examples i'll tell you that during the lightning you have seen that the the charge electric charge is flows from the cloud to the earth through the atmospheres even you also observe that the uh, charge will also flow when we connect uh, like uh, the two ends of the battery or two ends of a cell plus and minus the charge will flow so this is the flow of the charge and now we are going to st study the about the flow of the charges from the from one particular point to other particular points so this is known as the current electricity and this chapter is all about this one so first you have to know this thing that is what is called what is the definitions here so like the drift of electric charge in a conductor constitute an electric current in the conductor okay so drift of electric charge that means the charge will move in a particular direction so that is known as the electric current in a conductor now here in this part in next one is that charge carriers cannot uh, stay alone you already know that the smallest charge particle is the electron is electron or the smallest charge that is 1 point minus 1 point 6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb that is the fundamental so that means the charge carriers means something which will carry the charge okay so three things are there in case of solid that is called the conductor insulators and semiconductors so first we'll learn that in conductor which are the charge carriers in insulator which are the charge carriers and in case of semiconductor also so first you have to draw some atomic structure in atomic structure in nucleus there are proton and neutron okay inside now electrons are moving around this in a orbit different orbits the electrons which are revolving in the last orbit they are called the valence electrons okay so as they are revolving in the last orbit so the attraction force between the nucleus and these electrons are quite less so if i give the ex if if some external force is applied then this electron can jump from here so this electron will become the free electrons okay so this free electrons will go and it can go to the next atoms like this way the electrons will travel okay so this is the, this is the process the electrons will travel and it will uh, make some current it will produce some current in the in the conductor see in this diagram also in the wire the atoms are here the atom is here the from the atoms the electrons this electron will hit this atoms uh, electrons and this electron will leave the uh, outermost cell and go to the next atom so like this so electrons is moving in this way in this way the electrons is moving okay so we'll say there is a current next case of insulators so same diagram here in, in case of insulator the outermost the electrons of the outermost cell and the nucleus are tightly packed okay the bonding is so tight that the electron cannot leave the surface cannot leave that outermost cell so the number of free electrons are very less in case of insulators so normally insulators is not at all a good conductor or can say there is a very less number of charge carriers are there but what will happen in case of semiconductors so semiconductors are two types majorly there was germanium and silicon so you want think about silicons in silicons there are outermost cell there are four electrons are there like this way there is another silicon is there so they are sharing the electrons like this way they're sharing the electrons and here also sharing are there but not drawing the entire diagram just i want to explain 
what are the charge carriers are there now if one electrons come and hit this electron this bonding electrons this bonding electrons will leave from from these bondings okay this electron will leave from the bonding so here one empty space will be produced okay this electron the electron has come out this is a negatively charged particle so electron is the electron is the one charge carriers and these holes or this vacancy will also help to carry the charges okay so they are called the positive holes so positive holes okay so in case of semiconductors the two charge carriers are there one is uh, positive holes and another one is electrons so to learn in case of conductor the free electrons are there in case of insulator lack na less number of free electrons are there and in case of semiconductors there are uh, holes and holes and electrons holes are positive electrons are negative okay so next thing is that in case of liquids and gas what are the charge carriers in case of liquids and gas in case of liquids the ions are there ions is like positive ions and negative ions same thing positive and negative ions are there so suppose na plus nacl solution if i make then na will be positive ions positive and cl minus will be the negative so this type of things will help to do the um, help to carry the charges okay suppose think about this battery type things like here there are there is cathode and there is anode and cathode anode and cathode okay now in the here in this case the liquid the ions will help to carry the charges from cathode to anodes okay in case of gas gas is normally insulators mm. but uh, at the beginning i gave one example that at the time of lightning what do you see that the huge amount of charge is transferred from the from the cloud to the earth okay now what happens air is a bad conductor okay then uh, how it is possible how the charge carriers can travel so we know about the potentials no so he, if there are charges are there suppose the plus charge is here okay now it will produce the huge amount of potential is having huge amount of potential okay and this inside the gas there are different type of uh, inside the air there are different type of gases are there like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen different type of gases are there now this uh, suppose there is a gas molecule here okay in the gas molecule there is outermost there is electron is there now in this plus means what there is a lack of electron is there so what will happen it will take the electron from this from this gas okay from this uh, nitrogen say it take the electron then what will happen to the nitrogen nitrogen will become ions okay so like this way as the potential increases the in, in between the in between the air between the earth and this cloud will become like a ions so this ions will help to carry the charges okay will help to carry the charges understand so in case of gas normally the gas is insulator but if i produce a high potential then the gas will also can the ions will, will form into gas will break ionized and it will also help in conductions okay so there are charge carriers now how the charge will flow in case of like conductors that is our main intention to know so for that we have to think about a battery think this is a battery so battery is having two polarities like plus and minus so minus means having hot minus means having more number of electrons so many electrons are there in the minus so i'm drawing outside actually it is inside plus means what there are more number of plus is there okay plus also i'll draw inside also this one for understanding okay so more number of minus here now suppose uh, i'm going to like there is a scarcity of electron there is a excess of electrons now what will happen if i join this is in a, in a like a this type of thing okay like a wire so inside the wire what is that there are there are electrons are there or charge carriers are there i think there's a round round things are the charge carriers okay there are all closely packed 
close means there is no gap between the two charge carriers. See, there is a scarcity is there. What will happen? One electron. There is a empty space. The electron will go inside, and as the electron will go inside, the empty space will go. Go. Suppose I'll draw in a different color. This is my empty space. So empty space will come to here. Blue is the empty space. Then then electron will go to this empty space. Now the empty space will go. Empty space will go here. Okay, and and this empty space will be filled with the electrons. This empty space will be filled with electrons. Again, when the next electron will come to here, then this electron, this empty space will be filled with the electrons, and and the other empty space will go to here. Okay, so see the empty space is going in the opposite direction, and the electrons are going in the other direction, forward directions. Okay. So the flow of the empty space in the opposite direction is also known as the conventional flow of current. So this is happens in case of the DC, direct or direct current. So I'll talk about this one, DC. Now for this, the battery helps. Battery gives the energy to the electron to the flow. Okay, that is why it is written no three volt battery, then twelve volt battery like this. What is the meaning of three volt battery? Three volt battery means volt means what? Three three joule per coulomb. Okay. That means so one coulomb charge will travel through the circuit, okay, and the three joule of energy is required. That means I will send one electron like this way entirely this path. So three joule of energy is required. So normally don't try this one in home. Like don't connect the battery with the two wires. Otherwise your battery will become very hot. So normally what you do you connect a load here. Suppose fan or light like this, like this, okay. So what will happen? The three joule of energy is there in the electrons. This this electron will pass through this through the coil of the coil of the bulb, and this energy of three joule will be used by this coil, or you, or you can say the coil will become hot. The energy will get in the form of light energy. Then electron will have no energy. Electron will go back to the other other side of the battery. Okay. So like this way, the electron will flow. Now next one is the different types of like electric currents. Uh, so here I have to tell you what is the electric current. Already I explained this one. The definition is this: the electric current is defined as the rate of flow of electric charge through a cross section of the conductor. So normally you see in this diagram also this is the conductor. Now if I make a cross section, it will be vertical cross section. Not inclined cross section. It will be vertical cross section. I'll draw one more time. Here, so this is my conductor. This is my conductor. Charge carriers are there here. Now, if I draw a vertical cross section like this, it will be exactly 90 degree. Don't make cross section like this or like this. Okay, so this will be wrong. Now, number of charge carriers will pass through this cross section in a one unit time or in one second. Okay, that is called the that is called the current. Electric current, so I is equal to Q by T, number of charge car carriers per unit time. So Q is coulomb, and C is in second, so it will come coulomb second to the power minus one, and which is nothing but ampere. So amperes is also having uh, small, you uh, like small. Uh, like milliamperes, you can also ampere. It can be expressed in a milliamperes or microamperes. That is small form. Okay, small. Okay, it's a smaller unit of the ampere. So now how you can write this one in a differential form that you have to know. So here time we have taken as one second. Okay, but if I take the time very very small, very infinite, very small like time. So I t will be your like limit. Delta t tends to zero. One second, but this this is not one second. This is smaller than that, but not zero. So that is called dQ by uh, dT. Uh, sorry, dQ not delta delta Q by delta t. This one is delta Q by delta t. So this thing is known as dQ by dt. So 
what is dq? dq is equal to i into t so here the current is a function of time into delta t that is why you can do integrations so we integrate this one we we'll get q q is equal to this one i into delta t into dt so this is the integral form of the electric current so normally remember this formula this one another formula is also there we know from the um, from the quantization of charge so you know q is equal to q is equal to any okay any so we can write can write i is equal to equal to can write any by t any by t so n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 already you know this one this is called quantization of charges that means the electric charge can be represented in the integral multiple okay now the types of currents first one you already know that is called dc it's called direct current or the steady current that means the there is no variation it will remain constant so see here in this case this is steady this is plus 5 ampere current it could be negative direction also that is called minus 5 okay but it will not change that means what it will remain in negative it will remain there itself okay so now if for example i have drawn here that is plus 5 ampere this is called the direct current so the flow of current in the battery here in this case that is also dc that is also dc now next one is variable dc so what is variable dc here so say it will be like, like this that means what it will not go to the negative side it is always positive it is always positive but it is varying sometime it is 5 ampere sometime it is 6 ampere some sometime it is the different type of values are there or it could be like this ampere time it could be like this also like this like this okay so suppose 5 5 ampere then you go 10 ampere then again 5 ampere then again it will go to the 2 ampere 1 ampere like this way but it will not go to negative that is called the uh, direct current it could happen in the in the negative direction also but then it will not again will not go to the positive side okay so that you can say the variable minus direct current okay now in this case of alternating current alternating current is this is again your time axis this is your current this is your minus current this is origin it will go like this see some at some time it will become in the plus then you come to zero then again it will come to the minus okay so suppose here is a source of electron the ac the symbol of ac is like this symbol of ac will be like this okay. then suppose this is the circuit here think about the again think about a like pipeline electrons are there in the this pipe So what will happen when it is plus and it is minus electron will go to this side again after some time it will become your minus and it will become your plus then the electron will flow in the opposite side okay so it will be in to and fro motion so like, like one time electron will go in this side and after a certain interval, after a certain interval of time, electron will come to this side. So electron sometimes electron will go on this side for this for uh, this duration of time. Electron will go to this side in the same wire, and for this interval of time, electron will come to this side. Okay, so electron will shuffle its path. That is known as the alternating current, or in short form, that is called the AC. Okay, so we learn different type of things here today. So next class, we will talk about the drift velocity. So already we learned uh, how the electrons is moving. There is this is actually known as a drip drifting of electrons. So we'll learn in a details and also we'll learn about different type of formulas. Okay, thank you very much.